So this guy tried really, really hard to, to fit in here, even though he can't. what is going on guys and welcome back to another video now in this video i want to talk about 10 things that absolutely drive me crazy in ukraine and so before we begin i want to give you a little bit of a background about who i am so that you can understand my points of view better so i am originally from ukraine but for the majority of my life i lived abroad so i have a little bit of a different perspective I lived in the West and having recently returned back to Ukraine, I have a slightly different perspective as to what I believe should be acceptable and what shouldn't. So now that you understand my perspective, let me tell you some of the things that I wish were fixed or should be fixed in the near future in Ukraine. All right, so let's begin. The first thing is the garbage. So I would not go as far as to say that Ukraine is a particularly dirty country and Kiev as the capital is a particularly dirty city there are a lot of other cities in the world that are dirtier but what really drives me crazy about ukraine and kiev in general and other cities in ukraine is the fact that it's very common for people to just basically sit down somewhere uh, drinks coffee or drink beer during the day or in the evening or at night and basically leave their uh, can of beer or a cup of coffee uh, anything that they're drinking or even a plastic bottle basically leave it on, on the bench or if they're sitting uh, on the ground just leave it on the ground with the expectation that somebody else is gonna go out and pick it up and this is something I've seen all over the country this is something that I've seen uh, regardless where you are I've seen it in the capital of Kiev I've seen it in the center of Kiev I've seen it in the outskirts of Kiev and this really surprised me a lot that I saw this in the center of Kiev because you would think that people living in the center are a little bit more cultured and they wouldn't do that. And I'm actually living in the center and I see this all the time. And so I wouldn't go as far as to say it's particularly dirty. It, there's a lot of uh, cities that are dirtier, but there are a lot of countries that are a lot cleaner. For instance, countries such as Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, which are former Soviet Union, Belarus, I actually hear it is cleaner as well and so this is something i wish was improved because to me it's a little strange that somebody would basically uh you know drink something uh eat something and really not carry that to the garbage can this is what we call these people they just didn't have the the energy or didn't have the the drive to actually carry it through they basically finish what they were doing whether it's finishing a drink or finishing lunch and they don't really feel like actually walking towards the garbage can they were walking walking but they didn't actually finish and this is annoying to me and really you don't really see that often in the west in western europe you don't really see that often in the united states you don't really see that often and so this is something i wish that was fixed and hopefully this is something that's going to be fixed in the next uh, generation in the next five to ten years or so and hopefully even sooner the second thing that really annoys me about living in Ukraine is the fact that cars are basically free to park on sidewalks as they see fit. And this wasn't something that was annoying me in the beginning, but over time I started to notice that the city government is trying to make the city better. They're trying to, you know, plant trees, they're trying to make it cleaner, they're trying to make it nicer, but people are still stuck in their old ways and they're always trying to park their cars on sidewalk and so what the city government has been doing is it was it started to install these anti-parking uh, poles these anti-parking devices on the sidewalk and this actually improved the situation a lot but it hasn't really fixed everything because in some parts of the city uh, the locals started basically to remove these anti-parking uh, blocking devices and basically started to park their cars uh, granted this hasn't been happening everywhere and so there are really nice parts of the city that have been greatly improved with uh, much wider sidewalks 
much more pleasant areas to walk and enjoy life but this has been happening in other parts of the city especially where there's a lot of traffic especially when there's no, not a lot of parking spaces and so they basically install these uh, anti-parking devices and then in a couple of weeks you see them ba locals basically removing them and, and putting their cars right back where they shouldn't be putting and this is kind of annoying because it basically shows a couple of things number one is that nobody is really listening to the government so the government can go can go in and basically try to make the situation better try to improve the city but the locals really don't care they basically see it as a little nuisance because they can basically go out and and fix this problem and start parking their cars all over again and the other thing about this is that this is this is definitely not happening in the western world you don't see that in countries like Spain Portugal France especially United States you never see that because if somebody would do that they would basically tow their car and they would be left with a hefty fine and this is definitely not the case in Ukraine although it is improving I think old habits die hard so this is gonna take a while for it to improve okay the third thing that annoys me about Ukraine is the weather okay and this is obviously a, a kind of a subjective issue but me personally uh, I love sunny weather I like I love warm weather but what I don't really like is the fact that uh, the days are very short here for half of the year so right about October late October early November uh, the temperatures drop rapidly right so in the summer you have like 25 degrees Celsius which is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit and then towards the end of October uh, middle of October even early October the temperature basically drop rapidly and the days get a lot shorter you basically have no sun which is a, a major problem because in cities like New York which also has you know four regular seasons you still have very sunny uh, fall and autumn and sunny winters but in Ukraine right about October uh, right about the end of summer you basically could say goodbye to sun the days get shorter uh, it starts to get rainy it starts to become foggy and you know it can snow here and there but that is even not the issue the issue is that you're kind of you know your life kind of takes a pause and I do understand that some people like uh, that kind of weather they like four seasons but for me personally I like it a little bit warmer I like it when it's sunny I like it uh, a little bit more temperate so I really prefer something like a New York City uh, weather where you still have sunny days where you have kind of moderate winter as opposed to Eastern Europe where you have these dreary uh, pretty much half of the year is dreary uh, and it kind of affects everything it affects the mood it affects everything so this is an annoying thing and I do understand that some people might prefer that I definitely do not and this is something I realize I cannot do anything about so I either have to deal with it or I have to go out and change it myself the next thing that I want to talk about this is actually a really big one and this is something I realized only after a couple of years of being back to this country and this is the fact that there's always this always proving mindset and the issue here is that a lot of people are really kind of insecure where they are in Ukraine and so what I mean by that is that a lot of people are always talking about immigrating to the West right so whether it's uh, Western Europe or especially to the United States so people are always talking about uh, should I move to the US what are the benefits of moving to the US you can go on YouTube and all you see videos targeted at the Ukrainian market is videos of people in the United States that are talking about their experiences you can go on developer forums right and where you're gonna basically see people that are making a decent salary in Ukraine and they're always thinking like should I migrate to Netherlands should I migrate to Poland which is actually uh, a very popular option here should I migrate to Germany should I migrate to the United States what are the pros and cons and the other thing about this this is kind of a corollary to this is that you have people kind of bragging here and there is that hey I went to the US or I you know I go to the US 10 times or I got this uh, you know jacket or I got this device from the US or I have relatives in the US etc etc so there's this element of insecurity in, in Ukraine that you don't really see in other countries that are also not the richest countries in the world so for instance Turkey uh, the people are pretty secure where they are from my experience talking and visiting Turkey but a country like Ukraine people are always like thinking like okay should I go somewhere else 
Should I go to the US? What are the pros and cons? Should I go to Germany? And obviously, if you go to Germany, uh, if you go to the US, if you go to Spain, you don't feel that insecurity because the people exa know exactly who they are. Now, I do understand that this is an economical issue. Uh, people uh, over here in Eastern Europe don't have the same purchasing power as people in the United States. I do realize that absolutely, but there, like I said before, there are plenty of countries where people feel ex very secure exactly where they are. And so for me, this is kind of a big issue because you're basically living in a country where people are always thinking about how they can basically leave the country and where they should go. I'm not saying everybody is thinking that, but nevertheless, that is a recurring theme here in Ukraine, all right? The next point I want to talk about, this is a little bit of a subjective point, but this is my own opinion, is that the food is kind of bland. Now, I do love Eastern European food. I do love Ukrainian food. I am, you know, from this region. This is something that I grew up with. This is something that my mom cooked and I'm used to this food. But there are two main issues that I see with this. Number one is that the food is relatively bland. And so if you are fine with that, that is absolutely fine. But the biggest issue that I see is that you're living in a, in a European city, you're living in a, in a relatively big city, but nevertheless, you still don't have access to uh, decent restaurants with uh, international cuisine. And so while you have things like Georgian cuisine, you have some Indian restaurants popping up here and there, you really don't have good Mexican food. You really don't have, um, you know, good Brazilian food. You, don't, you really don't have a really good Spanish food. And so for a city that's, you know, three to four million in population, that's a relatively big city, is the capital of, uh, you know, a relatively big country in Europe, you still don't have access to really good European cuisine or international cuisine. And so while we have a couple of choices here and there, you still can't really go out and enjoy really, really good international cuisine like you can in New York City or even in Vilnius, Lithuania, where I used to live. They have good Mexican food there. They have good Spanish food. And so it's strange for me that a big city like Ukraine, you're kind of stuck. Now I do realize some people love Ukrainian food, especially if you're not from this region originally. And Ukrainian food does have a lot of benefits. It's very hearty. But uh, for me, honestly, I'm kind of tired of the kind of the blandness of Ukrainian food. And I really want something a little bit spicier, something a little bit different. And unfortunately, Kiev and really the rest of Ukraine is not a place if you are an international food connoisseur. And this, and this is something you have to understand. The next point I want to talk about, this is an important point as well and kind of really talks into the whole culture and the economical situation as a whole. And here in Ukraine, it's very common for developers to basically start building a building and never finish. So you can be walking around the city and you're going to see basically unfinished buildings in different stages of development. And so you might see, you know, a building that was supposed to be, let's say, 20 floors or 25 floors only have you know 10 floors or you might have buildings that are near completion basically buildings that are pretty much finished but they basically look like empty carcasses in the middle of the city and i see this all the time and the most annoying part about this isn't really the building is the fact that near the buildings you have to basically walk through this fa facade and this is all the time you, you're gonna see it everywhere in the capital of kiev you're also going to see it in other cities. And there was a street that I used to live with on uh, not so long ago. And basically every time I wanted to go uh, from one part of the city to another part of the city, I basically had to cross this narrow facade. Now, granted, the building had uh, like a cover on it, which was in the center of the city. So you weren't really staring at an empty, unfinished building. But nevertheless, if you wanted to cross the street near the building or under the building, you basically had to go under this facade. And as far as I'm concerned, this is in the center of the city. This is not somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So for me, it's a little puzzling. Why isn't the government, why isn't the city government, the, the regional government, or even the, the national government doing anything about it? Obviously, there's some value uh, to the land. There's value of actually finishing those buildings. 
there is value of making the cities downtown, the main part of the city where there's a lot of tourist attractions are, making a little bit nicer. But unfortunately, you know, you're kind of stuck with the situation of staring at unfinished buildings or basically staring at a wall that's trying to be a part of a building, but knowing that behind that wall there's absolutely nothing and then walking back and forth under this facade, under this narrow facade, where you kind of have to squeeze between uh, lots of people, especially during rush hour. And as far as I can remember, in the whole time that I've been back here, this is a recurring theme. And this is really annoying to me. I cannot understand why that is. We're talking about the capital of a country. We're talking about a city that should have money, a city that should have money for development. And this is not all. There's also issues where people actually bought apartments in various buildings and then the builder decided they didn't want to finish the building or there was some uh, quarrel. They basically had an argument maybe with the city, maybe with another bank and they ended up not finishing the building. And all those people who basically uh, purchased apartments before the building was built at a steep discount, they ended up having nothing. And this is a separate issue. Maybe I'll touch upon that in a future video. But that is a big issue here as well, right, about trust. So unfinished buildings, walking under this facade, it's such an annoying thing. And it really shouldn't be the case in a big city, in, in a big country, especially in the capital, okay? The next thing that I want to talk about, this is something I didn't really realize until recently. And, this, and that is the poor quality of roads. And recently I had a chance to see that firsthand when I was basically driving from the center of the capital to another part of the country. Now the roads around the capital are perfect. They're in great condition. They're actually awesome roads. They're, high, they're good quality roads. But as soon as you start to venture beyond uh, the capital region, as soon as you start to venture maybe three to four hours outside of the capital, uh, and the more remote regions you venture into, there's a higher risk that you're basically gonna end up on a road where you're gonna be asking yourself, should I drive on this road or should I go back and basically drive the entire Europe, try to basically leave Ukraine so I can basically go around, around or maybe even drive on the fields. And, th and this happened when we rented a car and we went to a different part of the country. And, and this is something that I had no idea would have happened. Now, if this was my own car, I would have been concerned because the road that I was driving in was literal, was basically littered with potholes every 10 or 15 meters. It was that bad. And honestly, I kept asking myself if I should basically turn around, uh, try to find another road or basically drive to the fields. And I had no idea of this, if it was actually this bad. And then I started reading on it and I actually realized that Ukraine has some of the worst roads in the world. We're talking about even on the same level as some African countries, not to mention Europe. And as a result, again, after some research, I realized that there's actually an, an application, a mobile application that you can download and you can basically ask other people and read reviews on different parts of the road. And so after that, I started to understand which roads you can basically take on your next uh, travels, on your next adventure, and which roads you should avoid. And it's the same thing as going to uh, restaurants whenever you are in your new city. You wanna read reviews, you wanna see, is this a good restaurant, is this a good restaurant? And as a result, you have to do the same thing with roads. And this was crazy, this was amazing because uh, this was even incredible because I was, I was recently back in the United States and all the roads are in perfect condition. It's not even a question, right? If you're gonna be driving on the road and you're just gonna be, uh, you know, pothole after pothole after pothole. But this is definitely an issue here in Ukraine that you have to be concerned with. Now, granted, this is a situation that the national government is trying to improve. Uh, the president has said that this is uh, one of the biggest priorities for his administration. And so I have seen some road work happening here and there. But what's going to happen in, let's say, three years from now, five years from now, even 10 years from now remains to be seen. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is a big issue for me. And this is obviously something that I adapted to. But this is still a main problem is that here in Ukraine, uh, if you want to buy an iPhone, if you want to buy a, like a nice camera, if you want to buy anything like gadgets or even clothes, expect to pay more than you would have to pay for that exact item 
back in the United States. And really having grown up in the United States and having been able to buy a lot of this equipment, I could say that I am, and as well as other Americans, are pretty much spoiled because, you know, we get iPhones really early. We can buy a nice camera. We have a two week return policy. A lot of things are really easy in America, right? This is something that I'm beginning to realize. But here in Ukraine, it's a little bit difficult. The first problem is that if you wanna buy, let's say a new iPhone, you're gonna get it later than others, right? You're not gonna get it as soon as it's available in the United States or even Western Europe, okay? That's the first thing. The second issue, it's gonna cost more, okay? It's gonna cost somewhere from 20 to 30% more depending on where you buy it from, okay? That's the other thing. The, the next problem with kind of buying these gadgets, and this isn't just applicable to phones or cameras or equipment or, you know, equipment that use technology equipment, things like that. It's also applicable to clothing. It's, it's applicable to anything. A lot of these big brands, uh, some of them do exist in Ukraine. I'm referring to clothing brands, but the cost of the clothing that you're going to be buying in Ukraine is anywhere from 20 to 30 percent higher than it is in, in in the U.S. or even in Western Europe. And so, the advantage of it, yes, there are some stores that exist, so you can buy it from the official store. It's going to be more expensive. Now, when it comes to Apple stuff, when it comes to things like that, there is no Apple store, so you're not going to be buying it from the real store. You're never going to get that Apple experience if you want to buy a new phone. And so that is something definitely I took for granted when I was living in the US because you can go to a store, you can buy it from uh, the company themselves and you, you have that you know rock solid 14 day return policy. And so you, you're pretty much covered. But here in Ukraine, sure, there, there are stores that are authorized distributors of Apple, but, and they do promise, you know, 14 day return policy, but a lot of times, there's a lot of these and ifs and buts. They may not honor it if they feel like, hey, you've used the item or it's open or maybe they see a scratch somewhere. You're never going to have this solid, this rock solid customer service that you have in the US, especially in the US. You're never going to have that here in Ukraine. So even though you may buy it from an authorized distributor, it's going to be a good item. Uh, if you decide you don't want it, yeah, you you know you will have you will have to do a little bit of work because they might they might deny your claim, they might deny your option to basically return the item, and so this is the problem. And this is isn't just applicable to that. There's a lot of things. Like for instance, if you want to rent a car, uh, they have these big brands that exist in the U.S. and and Europe as well. But the situation here in Ukraine is that a lot of these companies that you know think companies like national enterprise dollar rental uh, budget they're all franchises right so they're all private companies that basically paid for the right to use the brand and so the deposit is going to be higher the whole experience is going to be a little bit more difficult and so what i'm trying to say is that in this point is that Things are easier in the US in general. It's easy to buy, it's easy to return, it's easy to get advice, it's easy to do commerce, which is a lot harder in Ukraine. And last but not least, I wanna talk about scamming and I wanna talk about little tricks that people play on you, right? Now, the one thing you have to understand about Ukraine, and this is something that took me as a complete shock here, is that there's a lot of scams going on all the time, especially online, especially on a lot of these big sites, there's a couple of really good sites where you can basically go out and you can buy new or used stuff, right? This is especially applicable for buying used stuff. Now, what, what's happening usually is that you go on the site and they have an item for sale and then they message you and they say, okay, now you can go out and buy it and they send you a link. They say, well, here's the, here's the link. This is how the original site works. But what they usually do is they send you kind of a fake looking link that resembles very closely to the original site and that's fine that happens everywhere right but the main problem is that if you go through with the purchase using a ukrainian card you're never you know and they take the money from you nobody is gonna get you your money back and this is something that i've seen happening with people that i know and this actually took me as a big shock because in the united states if you take out your visa credit card or your mastercard and you make a purchase and you never get that, you know, get that product in the mail or, or you realize that this is a, a scam, 
that this is a fraud. All you have to do is basically call your bank and they're gonna give you your money back, no questions asked. That's called a chargeback and it's very common in the United States. It's so common that honestly, I don't really care if I go out and it's somebody's trying to scam, all I have to do is basically call my bank and they're gonna easily reverse the transaction very, very quickly. So it's something that I don't even think about, the fact that I can basically go online, try to purchase something and it's gonna be a scam. But here in Ukraine, it doesn't work like that. If you are using a Ukrainian card uh, and you have an issue, or maybe you're using your own debit card as well, uh, not your credit card, maybe you're using a debit card, maybe you're using a, a local Ukrainian card. There's no protection whatsoever. So you can even be a use, using a local credit card and you may, might go out and make a purchase and guess what, you realize the scam, you actually went on a site that mimics the real one, it's actually not a real site. Well, nobody's gonna help you. You can call the bank, you can call your bank, you can call their bank you can call their uh, credit card processing company and nobody's gonna do anything, okay? Now, I personally do not know why that is. Maybe it's because they don't wanna do it. Maybe because it's extra work for them to actually go in and um, investigate the issue. Maybe because they cannot do anything. And this actually was one issue that really, you know, took me by, by huge surprise because when I realized that this, these things happen and when I saw it actually happen to somebody, I know, this was a huge issue for me. I didn't realize it. And then I realized that, you know, you're basically living in a country where there's no protection here, okay? There's no protection. You have to kind of know what you're doing because if you make a mistake, there's nobody that, that you can call. There's no issues. And this really applies in a lot of situations. This is kind of what Eastern Europe is. This is what we take in the United States, especially in the United States, but also in Western Europe, to some extent, Canada, uh, maybe the UK, maybe Australia, for granted, okay? We have a lot of protection. We have, we have a lot of situations where if we are in a tough spot, maybe we ordered something on eBay and you know it wasn't delivered, we can basically file a complaint. You can file a complaint with your credit card company, you can file a complaint with the government, and chances are they'll be able to find that person or at least you know, the police might get involved and nothing like this would ever happen in Ukraine. At least it's not something that happens here on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if you are doing something, you have to be careful when you do it. You have to understand what you're getting into, okay? And last but not least, I want to talk about another big, big issue, okay? And that is the fact that nobody really trusts anybody else, okay? And this applies to the government this applies to each other, okay? And first of all, there's really no trust to the government, okay? And so the government exists, it basically enacts laws, but everybody knows that the government is basically um, trying to make money for themselves, that the government is not the most trustworthy government in the world. This is Ukraine, uh, not the most uh, transparent country when it comes to corruption and things like that. This is something that everybody knows. And so as a result, you have people that don't really kind of trust each other and don't really trust the government as well. And so the government decided that on weekends, the restaurants are gonna be closed, uh, the, the coffee shops are gonna be closed. And so, you know, people, so people have nowhere to go and, you know, they can stay at home and kind of, um, you know, slow down the spread of this whole situation that we're living in. And a couple of major cities in Ukraine, probably more than a couple now, probably several cities, major cities, well-known cities, basically said, no, we are not gonna abide by these new regulations. We are gonna ignore this mandate and we're just gonna stay open on weekends and we're pretty much do, and we're pretty much gonna do as we see fit. Now, what do you think happens when, when other you know, city governments do that? It makes it, it, it makes it seem that the government, the central government is very weak because other city governments can pretty much say what they want and do as they want. And so this is a problem because if other cities can say that, as a result, you know, nobody can really trust the government because then you have kind of a situation where somebody is abiding by the laws and other people are not abiding by the laws. And so this is a main problem here in Ukraine is that nobody, you know, people really don't trust each other, at least if they don't know each other uh, very, very well. And they also don't really trust the government because they are always looking at the government with uh, suspicion. And this is something that maybe it's carrying over from Soviet times, uh, but I feel it's also a combination of what's happening now, 
the fact that government is, uh, you know, has a lot of unpopular policy, the fact that government is not as transparent as, you know, people might want it to be, uh, as the governments are in the West. So this is a main issue here. And so these are the main issues that I feel are the biggest problems here in Ukraine. Obviously, some, some issues are uh, less concerning than others. Some issues are more concerning than others. And, you know, Ukraine is a relatively young country, right? It was only granted independence back in 1991. And so it's a relatively young country. It's developing. It has improved leaps and bounds in the past five to ten years. So in my, in my view, this is only going to be improving. So I'm curious what's going to happen in the next five to ten years. I personally feel that things are only going to get better from here on on. All right. So this is all I have for you guys in this video. These are the top 10 things that I absolutely don't like about Ukraine that I wish it would fix in the near or maybe in the distant future. All right. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content about life in Ukraine, definitely subscribe to this channel. I plan to make more videos about my experiences here in Ukraine. And plus, next week I'm going to be publishing 10 things that I absolutely love about Ukraine. And, and you definitely do not want to miss that video. So once again, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.